Hello, my name is Esnam Ramwana, and the title of my talk today will be Moral Monsters. These people have deluded themselves for so long that they really don't think I'm human. I base this on their conduct, not on what they say, and this means that they have become, in themselves, moral monsters. This was a quote by author and activist James Baldwin. I personally think it highlights quite well the existence of racism, morality, and white America on the same plane. Today, I want to use it as a basis, an inspiration to elaborate on the Black best friend trope, as well as examine how we as a country discuss issues of in inequity and demands for civil rights and humanity. A lot of us by now have probably heard of the Black best friend trope in movies and TV but it is a concept that goes beyond our consumption of media and in, and in our everyday lives. When talking specifically about race and racism, the Black best friend is used either to signal the morality of the main character or assist in their moral growth. This belief in integrity points that friendship with Black people automatically add because it may feel almost like charity, granting Black people with integration an opportunity to be more white adjacent. It is a perception obviously not tied to the screens. As you may have heard or used yourself, my best friend is Black, as a signal of virtue, solid evidence that you don't have a racist bone in your body. The Black best friend does not get their own storyline. Their existence is solely to ensure the audience of the main character's integrity. Some stories and experiences are a little more complex, slightly more adept at using Black people as tools unworthy of their own stories. These may give the Black characters some screen time as they experience racism, but do not worry. The story is still not about Black people because this racism is actually used to open the eyes of the main character, allow them to grow, and eventually help their friend in some way. You may have heard it be called the white savior complex. If you've seen the help or the green book, you'll know exactly what I mean. These are stories the country has been producing and consuming for quite some time. But time and time again, these stories are very real, probably none as obvious as this past summer. Mourning back-to-back -back heavily publicized violent murders of Black people by the state, Black people and some allies applied historically immense pressure on everyone from local politicians to corporations. Unfortunately, and in step with Baldwin's Moral Monsters comment and the concepts of the Black best friend and white savior complex, white people took to Instagram to make sure others were aware of their righteousness. Many took to reading and watching content intending to grow and become better people. Corporations who have historically benefited from the abuse and labor of Black lives took to Twitter to let customers know there is in fact ethical consumption under capitalism and it's them because they think Black lives matter. What I personally found even more interesting and ties even more directly to Baldwin's quote was it seemed some white liberals were actually beginning to acknowledge their own inability to understand right from wrong. They would ask their black best friend, is it okay if I do this? Or would this be racist? They didn't understand the solid line between offensive and helpful because they've been deluded to think I am not human. White America is so deeply enveloped in racist ideology and their own privilege, it is hard to understand, define, and conceptualize morality, the lines between what is right and wrong. I think it's important to understand this is not an individualistic problem, but much broader. Perhaps it'll help you understand why I say white people, white America, not some, pe not some white people. In Isabel Wilkerson's cast, The Origins of Our Discontent, she explains to the reader one key characteristic of American slavery that was unique. And that is in the fact that an enslaved African was not only expected to be submissive to their master, but also to every white person in America. This means that even people who were not masters were expected to be treated with a similar reverence and thus were greatly benefiting from the systems and opportunities created for them. From the start, all of white America became complicit in the creation of a permanent lower caste. 
It became hard for white America to listen to and value conscious because it's much easier to simply accept what is given to you and move along, especially if the country deludes you into thinking I am not human. When it happens over centuries, when you take those 10,000 hours it takes to become an expert in something and you become an expert almost 400 times, it is easy to see how white America has by this point become moral monsters. An example of this widespread inability to distinguish right from wrong was showcased this past summer. Civil rights leader and United States representative John Lewis died. He was called the Conscious of Congress, which indicates to me more about the country than it does John Lewis. One, that America has spent so long dehumanizing Black people that the only type of person that could possibly be a conscious, be a moral marker, would be an oppressed individual. Two, all men are created equal is not an American value, and equity is not on the minds of the average American. If it were, someone who fought tooth and nail for people to be treated equitably, no matter their race, would not be radical or extreme. And third, that America does not listen to its conscience, thus does not know right from wrong. We know this because if America was with John Lewis instead of against, our country would be in a different place. White America has become, in and of itself, a moral monster. I base this on their conduct, not on what they say. I want you to take the information I've given you, and I want you to think about this critically, not defensively. This is what I'll leave you with. In what ways have you been subtly convinced of the inhumanity of Black people? What are specific larger systems and institutions that have contributed to that? And how can we dismantle those?